Hello everybody, welcome to Soul Care. This is James M. Prague, and it is 12 o'clock on the west coast of, of the U.S. in California. I am here today and um, ah, nice to get together with all you guys today. It is Monday, a day we just answer questions and hang out and see how you're doing. I, my beard is growing in. What do you think? It grows in very quickly. Hello. Hello, Maria. Malia. Malia Lucia. Malia, you're always one of the first people on. It's great. And Judy. Hi, Judy. Good to see you, Judy. How is our Agnes doing? I hope she's doing okay. I'm saying prayers. Hello, Amy. Hello, Anne. I was trying, I'm a little late because I had to move things up to my office from downstairs in my house and I had some cleaners here as we're cleaning so there might be some vacuuming going on so just be aware. Everything's moving so quickly these days, right? Oh, happy to see you too. Hi Kelly White, that's the Kelly White and Kelly will be joining us tomorrow here on Soul Care and Kelly is a gifted medium psychotherapist and also astrologer and she's um i've referred to met kelly many times on here in soul care and um she's going to join me tomorrow to talk about astrology because there's some really important aspects that are coming in all oh, the rest of this month and the rest of the year and um we thought we would share them with you because they're pretty you should know what's going on you should be informed so you know what energies are happening right so tomorrow kelly's going to join thanks kelly I'm good, Valerie. I'm really good. Thank you, Kelly. I love not shaving anymore. It's great. Hello from Alabama. Thank you. I don't know who I look like. I haven't had a beard in 30 years. Hi, Casey. Nice to see you. Well, to hear from you, I should say. Good afternoon. Hello. I'm, I am enjoying this um, lockdown because I do it anyway, but this was the year I was going to take off and retire, semi-retire, and this is what's going on. So I'm pretty happy here. Um, a lot of energy from the world, a lot of things going on. So keep, okay, keep ourselves grounded for sure. A little growth in the face. Yes, a little bit. Next year, next year. Next week, I should have a full beard. It'll be a gray and brownish gray. It's fine, but it's starting to itch. Hi, John Williams. John Williams. <laughs> John Williams has helped me produce my um, Evening of Spirit. So where I do messages for people um, online here in the Zooms. My, it'll be our second Zoom demonstration. We did one last uh, month and it went really, really well. So if you're interested in getting tickets, it's $19. And uh, the information is right below there, vampire.com. John was kind enough to put that on Evening of Spirit. And tickets are, are starting to sell, so make sure you get yours if you're interested. And no matter if you get a message or not, the whole evening is, you'll get a lot out of the evening, for sure. Hi, Tampa there, Nancy from Tampa. Judith, June, Ruth, Krista, Tammy, hello. Wow, your mom passed five days ago, Kim, sorry, wow. Wow. Wow, well, it can't come on the evening of spirit. I'm not, she, she'll probably right, come right through then if she's a, uh, definitely she was interested in who I was. She know that, that what, she know if you're interested in this, it'd be easier for her to come through. Um, so Mondays we reserve for um, questions you'd like to ask me, general questions, not questions about loved ones because that will do in the evening of spirit. But um, for sure, uh, now is, is Mondays we reserve for different questions you'd like to ask me and um, I'm ready to answer them. Okay, it's from Melissa. Um, okay, when someone passes away, how long do you have to wait to call them, call that person on the phone? Um, well, for me, I, I, it, it depends on the, the, the how they passed over. Many times, if they passed over with a disease or a sickness for a long time, many times I find they have to get back the, their energy. And I wouldn't call them back right away because it takes a lot of energy to come back down to this level, this energy, like this vibration, vibratory rate, and to work sending a thought. So, but depending on the type of death, um, if it's a fast passing, like a heart attack or a stroke, or very, very quick, they tend to come back right away. Um, sometimes, depending on the illness, if it was a long illness, they tend to, 
about a month or so, I found. But everyone's different. I was doing a demonstration once and giving a message to a girl bringing her mother through. And she said, my mother hasn't passed. I said, well, she said she has. The mother passed on the way from this girl in her car going to the demonstration. So that comes very, very quickly as well. When uh, someone came in and she asked us, uh, when doing the sitting in the closet thing, to <laughs> keep her eyes open or closed. So I, I told you last week to do that. So sitting in, the, in your power, sitting in the stillness of your being, by going into the closet, should be a dark closet, no disturbances from the outside, no people, no animals, no children, no noise. And you just sit there, you can close your eyes and work with the breath. And that's it. And after a while, let the, just, you'll get to the rhythm of breath, the natural rhythm, and then just close your eyes and just see what happens. You can, you can concentrate on your heart, but it's a passive meditation. So you don't have to be so active, but just be mindful of how you're feeling and what's changing within you. And it's going to give you time just to rest and just go back to your heart self. It's a really good one. So, um, Sonia, do you have a message for me? Well, we're going to do a message right at the bottom there on um, June the 5th, coming up. So an evening of spirit messages. That's when we read the messages. Casey Ford, um, wonderful expression. How would you suggest us to handle this shit? Great. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. Um, well, how do we handle it? We just, I, I, number one, we have to ground ourselves. We've got to center ourselves. Meditation is really, really great. Um, I, I always just send out compassion and love, and that's how I'm doing it and not get caught up in the whole fury and fanaticism of it. Um, that's what I can do, and that, that's all we can do. We have to handle it. In order to work, affect the macrocosm, we've got to first work on the microcosm, and I think that will help in whatever way it can, sending out those positive waves of energy. Remember, everybody's energy, and you want to send out positive energy because there's a lot of negative energy out there. So sending out love and positive energy, sending out light, um, surrounding the world in a beautiful pink light of unconditional love really, really helps. Um, I did. A, uh, I was on a show this week, a radio show, uh, with Cindy Gelman um, from back east, in Rhode Island, and she did a lovely meditation about um, an orange circle and taking this orange circle and surrounding your head, going all the way through the body, and anything holding on to that, anything, any negative feelings, any negative energy, just attach that orange and let it go. Attach it all the way down to your feet into Mother Earth, and just let it all go off you, and then you can surround yourself with white light of protection, and then a gold light also around you. And that really helps. That helped me. So you can try that. Yeah. Oh, Kelly, really? Oh, my God. Message on June 5th, first lunar eclipse. Thank you, Kelly White. So we're doing messages on the first lunar eclipse. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, Kelly? I, we just picked that date. Thank you, Spirit. That'll be a pretty trippy night, then, is what you're telling me. It's going to be a pretty incredible night. <laughs> lunar eclipse. Woo! Uh, Valerie asks, what, what, what you refer to as spirit, is that the same as God? I'm not radically religious, just want to know, because I uh, have good... Well, Valerie, I, a spirit to me is the essence. So when we talk about the soul, I, I feel the soul is more of a container of the spirit. And the soul is a, a body, like, like the human body, but it's a spiritual body. looks exactly the same. And just like we have the breath in the physical body, the spirit is the essence of the soul. And we have that here within us. So we could say, um, that within that spirit, we are, we are God. Every one of us has that light. We have that light of God. Don't think of God as a human or a human element of God. God is beyond our, um, really our um, conception, really. But it's, it's love is the closest thing to God we have. Okay. Uh, this is Maria. If I'm, what do you see with this weekend's bad act? I feel sad for it because I think that um, with all of these riots and looting... I, I understand and I, and I you know, stand up for the rights of people and it should be that way and there should be changes made, of course, definitely. But to make the point, you don't need to go loiter and steal and destroy. That's wrong. That brings it down to a whole another level and you push people away then. So you don't do that. That's wrong activity. Standing up for your rights, peaceful demonstrations, you bet, 100%. They don't need to go into loitering. They don't need to go into stealing and hurting properties and hurting people because of that. So that's not right. You know, peaceful demonstration the way it has to be. Oh, yeah, thanks, John Williams. Uh, for mediumship, too, people that are interested in taking mediumship, I've been asked this a lot. We're taking applications until um, 
July, July 15th. So you still have time. So um, we have a lot of people organized with it already, but uh, applications on July 15th. We opened it up a little bit more because a lot of people are interested. So please take care of that if you'd like. Lisa, Liz Williams, should I move my practice to Orange County? I don't know, Liz, what do you think? Um, what do you think, Liz? Do you think they'll be happier there? Um, when will I marry my soulmate? Wow. Well, I, you know, I do an evening, because of this wonderful group here of soul care, um, my members and friends here said, you should do an evening of psychic mess, psychic readings. So I do that. So that'll be in a couple of weeks. So there's a whole evening of psychic messages where I answer those questions about your soulmate, about a job, all those questions are answered. So that's when you wanna to come to that, okay? This is just for questions that'll help everybody here because we're here for everyone. Let's start thinking for everybody. We're all one. Let's think about that. We gotta think about other people. Okay, so let's think about others. Ask questions that will help everyone. How about that? Let's try that. Chipa, Chipa Travesa, I want you to ask a question that will help everyone, okay? So turn your question around and make it a good question for all people to know something about. Michelle's asking, why do living things feel lighter and not as heavy when they pass? Um, well, first of all, the physicalness, the denseness of energy is heavier. So when you're rid of that heavy shell, it's like an overcoat. Spirit is often described as an overcoat or old worn out shoes and you're free from that. You're free from that physical dimension. So you are lighter. And that's what it feels lighter. When spirit comes through, they feel lighter. So the job for us down here in the physical world is to bring in the higher aspects of our spirituality and make ourselves kind of lighter while we're still contained in the physical. Okay? Do sicknesses exist on the other side? Danielle's asking that. It's a good question. I'm going to say yes and no. And I want to say that. Do sicknesses exist on the other side? Well, I'm gonna say that there are those that pass over who are of sick minds, uh, demented minds. I recently watched, it just popped up on my television, so I started watching the Jeffrey Epstein um, Filthy Rich series on Netflix. And it, it, it's, a, it's amazing how this guy destroyed these women. Amazing how he abused all these girls. And a, a, a complete narcissist and sociopath, and his mind is messed up. So when he passes over, his mind is still gonna be messed up, and it's, it's a sick mind. And he's going to go over there and they're going to try to help him. And he has to relive that entire, he has to review his life and feel those girls felt 20 times, 30 times, 40 times stronger. And that to me is hell. So he's being helped, you know, he's going to be helped. But the hard part of that is they, they have to come to a point of forgiving themselves. And when, he, when people do things like that, and I was tuning into him, he's not in that space of forgiving himself. He's in such a narcissistic space his whole life, that it's hard for him to learn how to forgive himself. So that's where he's at right now. So those places do exist on this side. People that pass over with these sickened minds, ways of doing things, they're over there and there are places like, we call them hospitals, but there are careful places, mind well. There are different places that'll help you to get back to who you truly are. So that does exist on that side, if I can put it that way. What's going to take to have understanding only when peace comes. Um, we're gonna have peace when we, we realize that we're part of each other, that we have a responsibility for one another, not just ourselves, but for everyone, and that we have to think of everyone. Like the United States, it, you know, Trump is trying to divide this country. It should be divided. It's one country. It's not red and blue. It's red, white, and blue. And that's what has to happen. People have to come together and we have to share and there shouldn't be any you know, delineation. We're just, we're humans, we're here in this together. I think even the world, we've got to be that. We're a global people. We're not separate from each other. So that's part of this whole lessons we're learning right now. And that's why the epidemic is on a global, this pandemic is on a global level, that we're all in it together. Do your pets stay with you after they pass? Yes, they do. They certainly do. And this month I'm doing a pets course. Three nights I'm doing that. And uh, yes, indeed they do. Sensitive, empath, same thing, sensitive, empath. This is a very helpful course, especially during this time. Oh, thanks, John Williams. Yes, very much so. Thanks, John. What was the spiritual purpose of a failed tr Trump presidency? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I really think karma. I, I really think there's karma involved with the Trump presidency. Um, I, I really, really do. I think that the United States has karma, and I think it's karma with him. 
and, and us. And um, I, I do believe that. Um, it's interesting to see where we are and where we're at from, what we'll allow, what we won't allow. Um, yeah. Spirit, see our struggles and send us strength all the time, all the time. And we signed up for this before we came back on this earth. We took this curriculum. We were ones that said, well, let's say the curriculum of this pandemic is going to happen in 2020 and it's going to be political unrest. And um, I don't think, by the way, this country is going to get any better right away as far as political unrest. I think there's more division happening. I really do. Um, we'll see what Kelly says tomorrow with the planets, but it doesn't feel like it's coming to an end. Um, because you need leadership in this time, and we don't have it. That's the hard part. So, okay. Oh, thank you. You missed the, the pets course. You'll be getting it soon. Make sure that you have an email list. Uh, your email is on my website, vampire.com, and we'll send you an email when the courses are available. It's going to be, I think, next week is the first one. Jane is asking, how do you distinguish between what is real and what is imagined in spirit work. Well, um, Jane, the more you get to know who you are as a soul, and that was where we talked about sitting in the quiet, sitting in the quiet of your being, you begin to have a relationship with your soul and feel the subtle differences between what's in your own head and that which is, is coming into the space. And you'll be able to recognize them. And how do you recognize them? Well, if you're always in your head thinking, thinking, and thinking, you're not gonna be able to recognize those subtle energies. So you have to quiet the mind and really surrender so that you're aware when these other energies come into the space. And that's what mediumship training is about. That's what sitting in the quiet is about, sitting in the closet. That really helps you to become aware of those senses, uh, those very uh, subtle energies, if you will, that are all around you in your auric field. And then you become sensitized to the colors that are in your auric field. And what the vibration of the color means. Red is different from yellow, or different from orange, different from green. And that's the exploration of sitting in that space where you would go, oh, I feel more like a green energy. What, I wonder what that is. I feel lighter with this blue energy. So that's this discovery, or discovery, for you to sit in the closet space and, that, and, and be with yourself and the stillness of yourself. And your soul will speak to you. It will start expressing itself. And you'll be able to receive that, not just in the human head, but in your whole total being. If we're in control of our lives, what does God do? I think you're thinking of God as a human. God is not human. God is love, and God always sends love. But the human gets caught up in the ego. God says yes, the ego says no. So God does, God is everything. God is the universe. God is the breath. God is the essence of life. So don't limit God. God is everything. So the more we attune ourselves to God, which is love, the more we will bring that love into our lives. And we begin to see love in every person and the right way of doing things and the good things of doing things, you'll see God in all things. Um, many people like this riot thing is, is really taking me out of fear. It's a totally fear-based um, um, reaction and just not right. And people should explain it's not right, but unfortunately people react out of emotion very quickly. It shouldn't happen. We want rights and we want change, but we can't do it the way we be, the people behaving. And then it's just one goes after the other, goes after the other, and they have a riot in the city, and that's it's ridiculous. You can't do that. It's not a way to change. It's not a way to change. It's going against it. Amazing. The biggest change, this is from Lisa Gale. The biggest change my is for over 25 years. Yeah, this is a big time too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Wood says, I'm finding that my daily meditation is helping loved ones come through in my dreams at night. Yes, very much so. Um, when you meditate, or when you open up your mind, it's almost like you're opening up that space for them to come in. It's almost like I see like a, um, uh, the airport, that when the airplane lands in, that, in the strip there, you're giving them a strip to land on. You're giving them space to use because you're not always so, <clears throat> here we are, so they can do that. How do you unblock a loved one's energy? Just sending them love, Tracy. You can't force them, baby. You can't force them. You can't force them to unlock the love. Just love them for who they are and, and don't, don't judge them. Just love them and uh, try to see what they're holding back to. Do it in a way where, you know, just talk to them in a, in a loving way and however you can get in there and unlock that. Just maybe issues that they're holding on to, traumas they're holding on to. Don't say, what's your trauma? Just easy talk about things. Try it that way. Try another way in. Yeah. Ah. 
Okay. Janine says, I meditate, but I have trouble connecting with the spirit. I also cry too much. How can I clear my emotions? Well, crying clears the souls. So what you need is to learn how to ground yourself and running your energy. And um, the JVP School of Mystical Arts, I have a course for you, which is Psychic Portals, and that's the one you should be taking. Um, that definitely teaches you about grounding, about centering yourself, be in control of the body when you're working as a medium, but first getting down the foundation of intuition. And the first thing you gotta feel that you're worthy, you're worth to receive. You give yourself permission to do things. You give yourself permission to be wrong. You give yourself permission just to try it. And that's really what we have to do. That's true in life too, you know. We have to reprogram our ways of thinking. I'm here, oh, Catherine, well, I, I'm not doing my podcast anymore, Catherine, but I'm doing these every day. Uh, Michelle spent an apparition the other night and woke me up. Had a light body, so that, the spirit. When you tried to focus it, when you started thinking, it disappeared. Because when you start using your, your brain, the critical brain, it'll disappear. It's not there. It's not the critical brain. The critical brain will block it. Hello from Swansea, Wales. Hello, Kay. Monica, what do you do when so sad and mad and try to meditate? I can't. Or working up a full body sweat in the garden. I work up a full body sweat in the garden. It's great. Um, I just want to get angry and mad and try to meditate. Well, I would meditate at that point because that's not good. You have to go through the anger, the madness, but don't let it take you away. You know, so you, you'll feel it. You'll sense it. I mean... It's hard with an empath not to feel what's going on in the world right now. Um, but then I, I, I ground myself. I run my energy, running my energy all the time, especially if I feel angry and upset. I run my energy, bring up the earth energy to the heart, cosmic energy down to the heart, run it out or arc to, and it falls down to Mother Earth as I'm continuing running the energy up and down and out. That's what I do, clearing the chakra points. June, what do you think? Yeah, I think there's some truth to that, Susan. Susan Arum, yeah. They've got to take time to be with themselves. And and remember, when, when one body's out of whack, like the emotional body, then it'll throw the other bodies out of whack. It's like a teeter-totter. So when the emotional body's out, it'll throw the mental body out, the spiritual body off. So all the bodies will be out of balance. So you have to balance all those bodies. What Melody's asking, what is the, what is the journey like after you pass? Well, depending on the life you lived here. If you lived a good, decent life, you'll have a great time. If you did something like, as I mentioned, Jeffrey Epstein, that would be a very horrible existence, I think. I mean, there's so much love over there and understanding, but you live with your thoughts. You live with the mental world you've created. Everything you've done here will be waiting for you when you pass over. So if you did good, you'll get good. If you did bad, that's be you'll be receiving that when you go over there. And one of the hardest things to do when you pass over is to forgive yourself. It's very, very hard. It's the hardest thing to do as it is down here, but we do get over that down here, we're able to do it, but over there, it's a very mental world, and there's no time, so all you're living with is mental, mental thoughts all the time, so that could be your heaven or hell, depending on how you lead your life, and that's why my work is very important to teach people that you have to live right, you got to do the right thing, you got to live from love, even when you don't want to, you got to try to love, because that's probably a lesson for you to use love, so when things are bad or sad, Try to be happy and try to think of positive things. And, and you can see why you're sad. You can write it down. What makes you sad? And you can write it down. I often get it out of my head because I don't want to clog in my head, so I'll write it down. If it's about a person, I'll write a letter or I'll write something down about a person. I just want to get it out of my head. Oh, thank you, Renee. Thank you very much for your compliments. Tisha Ford, you're able to work with spirits fairly easy, even though you don't work on it much as I should. Okay. I feel that spirits connect with me rather than the other way around. Is that possible? It could be, Trisha, but um, it could be, but I certainly would start working on my ability, my sensitivity, my grounding, my, my able to receive, that you're in control of that, and they're not in control of just coming over to you. You should be in control of the vessel, not let them be. But that, what that's telling you is that you have abilities that you might want to look into and develop them further. Okay. Um, this is from Amy McMahon. If you lived depression, will passing over be okay because you lived with negative thoughts? 
Well, I, you know, I think part of the journey then down here is not to live in depression. Why are you depressed? Life is a gift. Life is a gift. You will get to the other side and say, wow, why did I waste all that time being depressed? I was such a gift, I didn't live my life. So you have to find ways that you can get out of the depression in this time. Just don't live in depression. That's, that's, that, that's slapping God in the face. You know, you want to try the best you can to not be in depression. Whether that's thinking therapy, um, sometimes you have to take medicine, uh, whatever you can. That's up to you to do that. That should probably be one of the lessons you come back to learn. You have to take responsibility. Everyone's got to take responsibility. That's part of the reason we're down here too, is to learn to take responsibility. And I find nowadays, I'm so short with people, and I should not be short, but I am, I'm an idiot. And when they don't take responsibility, and I say to them, you know, this is the adult card. It's called responsibility. You're an adult, take responsibility. And that's why I say also a lot of people ask me questions about what's it going to get married. Well, you know more than I do because you know yourself better than I do. So let's start taking responsibility for tuning into our own intuition. What does our soul say? Take responsibility for our life. What do you feel? What's your choice? Choices are based upon fear or love. What are you, what are you aligning yourself with? Stuff like that. I'm getting really tough as I get older and my beard grows in. Will I be writing another book? I will be writing another book. I will, I will, I will. Um, I will, soon, actually. I'm going to uh, finish my play outline, which I've been talking about forever. And um, then I can concentrate on the book. So but there's a lot going on right now, so I might have to get a little, wait to see how things settle down a little bit. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you, appreciate my message. You get younger looking each time you come on. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's, you know, <laughs> a little makeup here and there. So. Hello, James from uh, Kitsch, Kish Cruz. Kish Cruz. From the Bronx. Love the Bronx. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Ellen, if you join the mediumship course, there's, we set development circles up for you. But you can find them maybe through a spiritual church. You can go online. They can talk to development circles. They do that now. Uh, that's possible online as well. And again, get tickets for the evening of Spirit, June 5th, coming up in a couple of days. Um, you should get on there, people, because it'll sell. And it's really an interesting evening. It really is. $19. You're home. Uh, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Long time no see. My dad and uncle showed up my dream last night. Dad passed uh, years ago. Dream is how I found out my uncle passed. Wow. That, that's a way, for sure. Never knew uncle's children. How do I, wow. How do I lay my children? My uncle's concern. Someone he named when I don't know their contact with them. Um, Nikki, you just gotta wait and see how they, sh that he will bring that person to you. Usually, they'll make it a way where that is available to you. I wouldn't push it. I'd let them take the lead on that one. But it happens a lot. Beard is looking great. Thank you. I think the beard looks pretty good. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> Helen Davies. Good to see you. Jerry, why did you participate in your husband's passing? From where it's from the guide came from. You were there to help him over. That's where you, that's where the, the, you set up that. Thank you, Florence. Leah, why do people suffer mental illness? Um, you know, I don't know, Leah, but I do think that it's just a theory that when we come back on this earth, it's a schoolroom and learning lessons. And I think there's some souls that come back here to learn about perfecting the spiritual body or the emotional body in a lifetime or a mental body in a lifetime. So I think that has something to do with it. I also think, of course, it's all integration. So we have to integrate our different bodies, a causal body, a spiritual body, the emotional body, the physical body, the mental body. There has to be an integration. And there are some souls that still have some work to do with that. So whether it's mental conditions or physical conditions or emotional conditions, they have to go through them in order to integrate all of those. So I think that's something to that. Um, I might be off, but I, I don't feel I'm off. There's something like that I, I feel is very true. Integration would be the word. But I don't know if it's suffering as much as experiencing. Because I, 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 I don't know. I don't like the word suffering. As I do more do this work, I don't like, I like experiencing better. Because I don't know if they're suffering. I don't know if they have to go through that for some reason. I think they would. I don't think things just happen. I think we have to experience it. So if you're interested in messages that we're going to do June 5th, uh, down below, John wrote it there. And tickets are available. Uh, Evening of Spirit, and that's it. June 5th, 4 p.m. 
my beard grows. I, I have a quick beard. It grew one week. My roommate, my housemate said, I'm very jealous of your beard. I said, I know it grew quick, but this is a stage is in between. I, it's the itchy stage. But I haven't had one in th over 30 years, so what the heck. Didn't know what it was like. I am doing more readings. Yes, Donna, right below. More messages right, right below. People have depression because they feel separated from God or spirit or themselves, right? We are God. So I, I think there are many reasons people have depression. But um, I think unrealistic expectations, I, there's many different reasons. But one thing that would help them is certainly be in alignment with their spiritual self, their God self, their soul self, their higher self, right? Well, I, anybody, I think, anyway, here we go. Yeah. You were there at the last one. It was great, wasn't it? Last, this night of spirit. Kathy, how many unconnected people died together in tragic circumstances? It's a hard one to answer, Kathy, because I think everyone's connected in some way. So how do we not know they were together in other lifetime? Many lifetimes. We could be living right now, several lifetimes right now, all at the same time as we're experiencing this lifetime. Because there is no time, so the past and the future can be one. Something to think about. That's what my next book is about, by the way. Elizabeth, you like my new look? <laughs> Good. I'm working to forgive my husband. Thank you for your... You need to forgive your husband because if you don't forgive your husband, you're holding back love to yourself. It's a gift we give ourselves. Well, I'm going to get going, you guys. Thank you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. And Kelly White will be here with me talk about astrology for this week and the year. And I would advise you not to miss that because Kelly White's a very knowledgeable person, great medium, and um, uh, she will be here tomorrow. A good, good friend of mine. And she's very, very knowledgeable. And John Williams is going to help us tomorrow as well. And um, please, again, if you're interested in tickets, today you should buy them because they're going fast. Just saying. All right. Thanks, John. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Love and light to each one of you. Bye.